Chapter 2. Methodology. Two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the one less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. Robert Frost, reference 31. 2.1. Four reasons for grounded theory. The growth of the internet will slow drastically, as the flaw in Metcalfe's law becomes apparent. Most people have nothing to say to each other. By 2005 or so, it will become clear that the internet's impact on the economy has been no greater than the fax machines. Paul Krugerman, reference 32. 2.1.1, grounded theories are used to inform public policy. This thesis utilizes the grounded theory research methodology. Grounded theory has been a popular research methodology in the social sciences for the better half of a century. It is commonly used for developing novel theories that are grounded in and inductively derived from systemically analyzed data. This methodology is commonly used for research related to public policy. As co-creator of grounded theory, Anselm Strauss once explained, grounded theory can be relevant and possibly influential either to the understanding of policymakers or to their direct action. Reference 33. The author chose the grounded theory methodology for four primary reasons. The first has already been mentioned. It is one of the most popular forms of qualitative research used for shaping public policy. Second, it is flexible enough to accommodate analysis from multiple different theoretical frameworks. Third, because it accommodates disciplined qualitative analysis and qualitative analysis is necessary for addressing questions related to public policy making and national strategic security. And fourth, because the author's personal desire to challenge himself with a different type of research methodology. Expanded on these four, yeah. Do the hardest thing ever and then do it in a way that's different than you're used to, Jason. Good job. Expanded on these four reasons Further, an explicit goal of this thesis is to help policymakers, military senior leaders, and the public become more aware of the social, technical, and national strategic implications of Bitcoin, following two presidential executive orders released by the White House within the same three-month period. The first was by President Biden's March 2022 executive order on ensuring responsible development of digital assets. The second was President Biden's May 2022 executive order on improving the nation's cybersecurity. Grounded theory seems like a natural fit because it enables the author to address both executive orders simultaneously to help inform White House staffers and public policymakers. 2.1.2 Analysis of emergent technology should not be performed under singular theoretical frameworks. The second reason why the author selected grounded theory is because the methodology's flexibility is necessary to explore the full range of implications of an emergent technology from multiple different perspectives. The author felt it was necessary to use a research methodology that could accommodate a wide range of data analysis across a broad range of subject matter. When this research endeavor started, it was clear to the author that Bitcoin could be analyzed using many different theories, but it wasn't clear what subject area was most appropriate for conceptualizing Bitcoin's socio-technical implications. To expand upon the argument presented in the introduction, some theoretical frameworks for analyzing Bitcoin are clearly more popular with academia, but that doesn't mean they're more appropriate. This point of view became a core theme of this thesis because one of the primary hypotheses to emerge from data analysis was that academia could be inappropriately categorizing 
Bitcoin as strictly a monetary technology, thereby creating a blind spot which ignores other categorizations that expose potentially more significant national strategic security implications. In short, current research efforts are not addressing, addressing two basic principles of computer science. One, object-oriented software design is an arbitrarily derived abstraction. Two, the semantics used in all software design specifications are also arbitrarily derived, making Bitcoin an arbitrarily derived name for a software abstraction. The problem with using a traditional scientific model for research in Bitcoin is that a theoretical framework of analysis must be presumptuously chosen up front, and then one or more hyp hypotheses must be derived from within the boundary of that theoretical framework prior to the collection of data to ass assess the validity of the hypotheses. By researching Bitcoin using a traditional scientific model, academics are compartmentalizing this technology into one theoretical category from which they analyze it, which almost always ends up being one of the same three frameworks, financial, monetary, or economic theory. To illustrate this point, the reader is invited to perform their own literature review on Bitcoin to find a paper that doesn't analyze it using one of these frameworks. Guess what? This one pretty much doesn't. All right. Shoehorning Bitcoin as strictly a monetary technology and then relying on the expertise of economists to influence public policy could be a major problem. I would like to say, Jason, that's a typo. The word could should be is, could be, should be, is a major problem. Is a major problem. Again, my opinion, not Jason's, at least not from this write-in. Anyway, there could be very high stakes game theory at play for the US if proof of work protocols like Bitcoin represent more than just a candidate form of internet money. If everyone researching Bitcoin is complicit in making the same tacit assumption that Bitcoin is strictly a monetary technology prior to analyzing it, then that is going to create a pool of skewed and biased research that gives public policymakers a massive blind spot. This could be devastating to U.S. national security interests and global power dominance in the 21st century if Bitcoin does indeed represent more than just peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. Bitcoin is multidisciplinary technology and multidisciplinary technology be compartmentalized and can multi be compartmentalized under single theoretical frameworks or fields of knowledge. I, I'm not exactly sure what word's missing there. As Harvard professor Orlando Patterson argued in 2015, over-reliance on economic pseudoscience is an emergent problem within academia in general, not just as it relates to research on emergent technologies like Bitcoin. Have we given economists too much authority based on mistaken views about their scientific reputation among established scientists and the public? Reference 34. Thanks to the grounded theory research methodology, the author didn't have to choose a single theoretical framework like economics from which to analyze Bitcoin. Grounded theory gave the author the flexibility needed to analyze Bitcoin from multiple different domains of knowledge and chase the rabbit down a complex, multidisciplinary rabbit hole that involved concepts and categories from multiple different scientific and engineering disciplines. After collecting data using different theoretical frameworks, the author was free to use inductive and deductive reasoning to develop several unique counterintuitive but informed hypotheses, which could be followed by more targeted data collection techniques for validation. This methodology allows the author to present the academic community with a theoretical framework they can use to do their own analysis, develop their own ideas and hypotheses, and to think for themselves using their own area of expertise.
2.1.3. National security is a trans-scientific question involving unquantifiable variables. The third reason why the author selected grounded theory is because questions regarding public safety or systemic security are fundamentally trans-scientific questions that incorporate frustratingly unquantifiable phenomena like security design decisions and ethical considerations. It's impossible to objectively quantify what good security design is, just like it's impossible to quantify what the socially right thing to do is. These are fundamentally trans-scientific questions that demand rigorous, qualitative, not quantitative, analysis. The grounded theory methodology is famous for its ability to support flexible yet structured qualitative analysis of precisely these sorts of trans-scientific social questions. This thesis explores social and security implications of an emergent technology. So it seems appropriate to utilize the methodology that was explicitly designed to address social questions like public safety and security. 2.1.4, grounded theory is more challenging, more fun, and perhaps more likely to be seen. Finally, in the interest of being fully transparent to the reader, the fourth and last reason why the author selected a grounded theory methodology is because of selfish personal motivations. In the author's subjective opinion, grounded theory looked like it would be more fun and challenging and produce more interesting deliverables than traditional scientific method, than thus a traditional scientific method. Many have argued that grounded theories offer more conceptually dense and intellectually satisfying results. This thesis represents another DOD-sponsored research endeavor and a second chance for the author to produce another thesis. The author saw this as an opportunity to challenge himself with a different research methodology with which he had no previous experience. Additionally, the author thought that using a grounded theory methodology might produce something more people would want to read. Public research that nobody reads is poorly performing public research. It's frankly a waste of dollars, not to mention a waste of the researcher's time, talent, and expertise to write something that nobody reads. Well, we're going to get this in the eyes and ears of as many people as possible.